Hello, my friends. Today, we are going to talk about obesity. Uh, many obese people, fat people, basically when they come to doctor because they have whatever health problem, the first thing doctor is going to concentrate is, well, you have to lose some weight. Uh, your body cannot support it. This is the reason why you are sick. Um, if this would be the case, if fat would make us sick, then I feel sorry for all the whales and all the bears because once a year they really get fat because they need the fat for hibernation and they do not get sick. So obviously being heavy, being overweight has nothing to do with being sick. But what is happening with humans, it is obvious that when people become fat, they are more prone to sickness. And sickness, as I've explained before, is basically just uh, symptoms that the body shows when it cannot handle the toxic load. So is the fat toxic? Well, obviously, fat is not toxic because we all accumulate it as a spare nutrition, as a spare food, spared energy source when we are not eating. But here came the polemic again that fat is a secondary fuel, that our primary fuel is glucose. Well, this is completely ridiculous, although uh, I would say all doctors believe it because this is what, is what we are served in a school. How can you have a vehicle that not having enough fuel to run on? For example, if you have a, a motorcycle two-stroke with a two-stroke engine that you put oil and gasoline, you have to mix oil with gasoline so the cylinder can start, gets lubricated. And uh, now if as a designer you make a huge tank of uh, two gallons for oil and one pint for uh, gasoline. Well, how long can you run with this motorcycle? From one corner to another? Because you run out of fuel. You have plenty of oil there, but you'll run out of fuel. This is what would happen if our body would be designed to run on glucose. We don't have storage of glucose. Well, now a lot of nutrition experts, nutritionists are really, remember, when you're talking about experts, you are talking about people who read a lot of books about a particular subject. But it doesn't help you because those books are compromised. So, the knowledge of these experts is compromised. Then how can glucose be our primary fuel when we do not have deposits of it? And these nutritionist experts, they say, well, glycogen is the deposit of glucose. Well, but glycogen is not supplying every organ in our body. We only find it in muscle tissue mostly in muscle tissue, a little bit in the brain and a little bit in the liver. Liver can only contain 100 grams of it. So how can 100 grams power your body if you cannot find the food? And it may happen that you cannot find food for three, four days. You would be dead if you would depend on the glucose from glycogen. And there is another thing. Glucose is stored within glycogen. What is glycogen? Is glucose bound to protein. Now cell cannot use this glucose until the connection from protein is broken down. So once when it breaks, it becomes available, but this is only under influence of stress hormones. I spoke about it many times, but this is important to know. So if you hear someone telling you, well, glycogen is our main source of energy. Well, that person absolutely has no clue about the body because the big storage of reserve fuel is our fat. And this means that 
our cells depend on fat as its primary energetic source. Now, why do people get fat? Because they start eating food which is not programmed. The body is not programmed for this food. And this is carbohydrate. Carbohydrate basically is starch. And starch is glucose. When glucose comes in, increases production of the transporter, the glut. So more you eat it, more you absorb it. And after that, it triggers insulin also production, which insulin destroys your body. Now, when we go in relation to getting fat, what is important? That as more glucose becomes available, cells will be forced to use it for energy production. And this way, because it's very explosive, they, are, they will have to diminish amount of mitochondria that they have. So here again, we are seeing actual, actual cellular changes. So what happens? More, less mitochondria you have, less energy the cell can produce from fat. Because to make adequate amount of energy, cell needs big amount of mitochondria. If mitochondria amount is reduced because you are eating glucose, now when you are not eating and the energy is depleted and the cells ask for fuel, well body can only send triglyceride. They are not going to send glucose. They, the, glucose is not available and you are not in a stress. So glycogen is locked. It's out of reach. So you are basically going into starvation mode. And you become very hungry. So when a meal comes, you don't eat a little bit of rice, a little bit of potatoes, a little bit of bread. You eat a big plate of stuff on it. Now again, you can only use small amount as an immediate energy source for the cells. And if your sugar absorption is high because you are eating glucose all the time. Remember, it's not fructose, it's glucose. Fructose doesn't do any of it. So as glucose made this high absorption and now a lot of glucose is coming and glucose and now in when glucose comes, the same glut um, transporter will bond to fructose even faster. So even fruits become now dangerous for you. As it comes into the blood, now the cells use a little bit of it, and the rest of it, they cannot deposit, body cannot deposit. So liver changes it into fat. Since your cells are incapable of using adequate amount of fat to produce adequate amount of energy, most of the fat is going to be deposited in your adipose tissue and you are gaining weight. And when you become hungry, when you can actually start using this fat, your cells cannot really use it because only fraction of mitochondria is active. So, body will use small amount of this fat, but it is going to go into stress mode because the amount of energy produced by fat now is not adequate. And by creating a stress, they tap into glycogen and get to glucose and make you hypoglycemic. Only glucoholics, which I call people that eat carbohydrates, can go easily into hypoglycemia. People who eat a lot of meat and meat fat, animal fat, they never go into hypoglycemia. They cannot get there unless they are in stress. But average Joe Schmo that 
gobbles up plates of carbohydrates very easily go into hypoglycemia. They have to eat multiple times a day because the fat will not sustain them that they have and they are all getting fat because you eat a lot, you're producing a lot of fat and you cannot use it. So you keep storing it and bloop, bloop, bloop. So now they say, well, easy way to lose weight and the best way is to lose weight is control your calorie intake. Well, if you reduce calories, especially now you are reducing carbohydrate and your cells are adjusted to use carbohydrate, which means they are out of order as it comes to, to fats, you're actually putting the cells in starvation mode. And this is why so many obese people cannot tolerate this diet. They go for it a little bit, little bit, they suffer because they are constantly very hungry. And yeah, they lose weight. And as soon as they stop and they start eating, they blop up again. Because they did not reprogram their cells. And reprogramming of the cells to work properly, to increase adequate amount of mitochondria so they can produce energy from fat sufficiently can be done through absence of glucose in the diet. The only thing is that there are people who say, well, I did it and I'm doing very well. People don't have the strength. Yeah, well, if you persist and you can pass the accommodation time, less sugar it comes, the body realizes that it is not producing enough energy also can see how much sugar it comes and adequately rises the number of activated mitochondria. So more mitochondria is active, so they work better and they can now use more fat and they start slimming down. But this is not really the best way to go about it because again, it is difficult because you are in starvation until you get adjusted to it. It's way easier if you just drop the glucose altogether, drop the carbohydrates, which means, again, dietary carbohydrates, which are the cooked and processed ones. You can have banana. Banana is carbohydrate. If you have it raw, no problem, because the carbohydrate by nature, by our creator, is separated from our digestion. It's packed into cellulose and you cannot digest it. So every nutritionist that tells you, wow, you are overweight, you cannot have bananas, has no clue about digestion, okay? You cannot get fat on raw bananas. You will actually lose weight like crazy. You don't have to trust me, try it. But when you do some experiment, you cannot mix particular food that you are testing with some other food. You cannot have some bananas and then have some potatoes cooked or boiled because you are going to get nutrition from the potato, so you cannot see what's happening with banana. If you want to see if banana is nourishing you, and if it is nourishing you, you should be able to live on it. So try, five days, eat only bananas, as many as you want, ripe bananas, but not cooked, not processed, not heated, just regular, ripe, raw bananas. And you will see that with full stomach you will be extremely hungry and weak. You will go into hypoglycemia first day and then you will slowly come out of it and you will start feeling better and better because you are going to be using your fat, but you will start slimming down. You, you can fast on bananas, okay? This is, it's not giving you any nutrition. Again, 99.9% .9 nutritionists have no clue about it because we never look at a food, at the difference of the food when food is raw and food is cooked or manipulated any other way. Now, Ayurveda experts, they always say, well, we have nutrition, we have different types of, of nutrition, of reaction to nutrition. So this way, some people do better with some carbohydrates, some people do better with a lot of meat, some people do better with little meat and a lot of carbohydrate, and um, 
we know about it because when they change the diet then they feel bad they have to go back on the same diet well the nutritional typing would they say yeah well we are programmed on different nutritions why through our diet because once when you start eating even a poison if it's in small amounts that doesn't kill you your body adjusts to it and starts tolerate it and you can eat this poison you can eat now bigger and bigger quantities of this poison and you are fine with it so now you can say that your nutritional typing is geared to the poison that poison is good for you because it will kill somebody else and but doesn't kill you but this is because genetically you adapt this is why we have genes to adapt to any bullshit that we put in our body otherwise we would die from all these things that we are eating because original program is programmed in a way to keep the body in a permanent state of ketosis when child is born is in ketosis all the animals are in ketosis why should we be different so the thing is that and uh, i have proven it on many of my clients i have them around the world from australia to africa to europe north america south america everywhere and they all are brought with the different types of diet but once when they switch to the natural what i call uh, food of god natural diet they all do perfectly on it and all their health problems disappear plus they lose weight they go down to normal weight which is without any suffering without any any starvation just changing the diet into proper diet and uh, uh, you know I'm always being attacked mostly by mostly by vegetarians and vegans that I don't know what I'm talking about but this is how it works you want to lose weight and be healthy you gotta change your diet not minimize it change it because it is all in diet and the, this is uh, science about it this is not well statistics are showing statistics are based on sick people because everybody is wrong we are being we start eating the forbidden fruit 6,000 years ago and we eat more and more of it and this is why our lifespan is getting shorter and shorter and we are getting sicker and sicker earlier because we eat more and more of this forbidden fruit which is dietary glucose carbohydrate why did Eve give it to Adam because women are the ones that cook and you have to break the cellulose for this food to become available for absorption you give raw foods nothing happens because by creator we are protected from this type of a fruit food but we unleash it by cooking and processing it heat burst the cellulose and this is where the problem comes uh, i have tried many different uh, diets myself i was vegetarian for six months my f my friend uh, alimi down in culebra knows about it because we were doing it together and then i was even vegan very shortly because i noticed that this is crap it's not diet and i went back to research and found out that meat is what we need <coughs> not just meat animal products eggs insects we need fat more than protein once when we grow up so this is something to for you to think about just uh, you know just uh, listen to one video that says that um, even fasting is not for everyone only few people benefit from fasting as a health because it depletes their gonads and ta da da these are all stupidities depleted gonads 
de depleted adrenals. This is idiotic thinking. Nobody depletes adrenals. When adrenals don't work properly is because nothing else is working properly because we are exposed to the wrong environment, to the wrong frequencies, and the whole body gets out of whack. The genes are, have a lot to do with this because they adjust the body to this and then by this way it becomes readjusted to many other things. Um, I wrote some articles about this issue as well, maybe I'll post one on my blog again, because all this talk with alternative medicine is trying to uh, present itself as a, a better, more sophisticated with all the answers and basically they are, the, the knowledge is coming from the same box. If you don't come out of this box, you don't know nothing, you are just repeating the same mistakes. <coughs> the only difference between alternative medicine and allopathic medicine is alternative is trying to find different ways to go away from the pharmaceutical poisons. But the base of their science is the same and the base is, is fraudulent, base is wrong. So you cannot come with a good solution if you are still working from the same box. <coughs> Well, I think that I made enough points here that for you to think about and um, uh, see for yourself that the problem is not restricting the body from the food, but giving the body the proper food. This is going to slim you down and heal you at the same time. Of course, you can get fat and overweight on food of God. You eat a lot of lard, you eat um, a lot of pork, fatty pork, fatty meat, fatty fish. If you lead, eat a huge amount of it, you are going to bubble up, you're going to get fat too. But you are going to have the healthy fat, you, you will be healthy and fat. And you will not have to see doctor. So fat has nothing to do, obesity has, no, obesity has nothing to do with uh, your state of health. It is all where the obesity comes from. If you got fat by eating carbohydrates, plant food and um, additives, of course you are going to be sick and fat. If you gain weight by eating a uh, lot of pork or because, again, it's very difficult to gain weight on a lean meat. Because lean meat has the same caloric value of carbohydrate. So, if you now eat plate of uh, carbohydrates, well, if you replace this with a plate of lean meat, which means more than one chicken in one sitting, but without skin, of course, just lean chicken, to gain some weight. Well, nobody eats like this. If you, when, once when you eat meat, you eat a piece. So this way, this way if it's very easy to control the amount of calories you bring in without starvation. You just eat more fat if you want to gain some weight or reduce the amount of fat and eat more lean meat to drop the weight down. I see it on my dog. Um, if I give her just beef, minced beef, I can give her half kilo and she is going to be losing weight. But then if I bring in some pork fat and or chicken skin and give her a fraction of this weight, she starts bubbling up because fat has more than twice the caloric value of protein or carbohydrate. So it's very easy to control your weight once when you eat correctly, because you are not hungry, your body always have fuel because you always have fat. So yeah, you may feel with empty stomach, but not hungry. You, your mind is clear, you have the strength, you have the agility, everything is fine. Just empty stomach, this is easy to tolerate. 
and then by increasing the fat you can get heavier or just keep it lean you yourself will get lean very simple process without any hassle without any headaches without any starvation very simple try it you don't believe me you should not believe anything anybody tells you you should think about it and then if it if your brain finds out that there is something in there try it for yourself and after you have tried it then talk to me if you don't try it you know nothing very often I have replies um, on YouTube for example people just read the description and they say wow oh, this is not true or they don't even listen to the video video why I'm making this video because video more likely you will you will listen to you will, you will you know people don't like to read so if I make description about the article no matter how big description is I cannot put everything in description so they read the description and they may comment on description without reading the article where actually the information is and of course they start protesting and talking wrong about things because they haven't read the article this is the same thing, this is typical behavior of a Democrat. You gotta sign it so you can read what is in it. Well, what a bullshit. But I guess this is a new, new knowledge that comes out of school. You gotta first do things and then figure out how you screwed up your life. Okay, that's it for now. I hope I gave you material to think about and something to try. Any question, please post it down or let me know through email. Thank you for being here. Love you.